Hey, thanks for watching this week's video. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see when a new video drops. If you live in the Okeechobee area, we would love for you to come check us out in person. The Church at the Rock service starts at 9 a.m. and the Legacy service starts at 1115. If you have any prayer requests or want to connect with us, fill out our Connect card. You can find it in the link below. Now, here is the message. We're going to have our parent-child dedication this morning, so I'm going to ask our first shift to come on out. We have 12 kids this morning, so we're doing them in shifts of six because they won't all fit. Isn't that a good problem to have? Uh, so over the, over the course of time, um, we've, all, we've, we've traditionally done uh, baby dedication on Mother's Day. May need to do it more than once a year because these people keep having children. Um, so, you know, there you go. But we're, uh, we're so glad that, um, that they're here to participate in this. And so when we think about um, parent-child dedication, what, what it is is we are, as a church and these families, making a covenant, an agreement between each other that these families are going to raise these children in a Christian home and they are going to love them and they're going to share the gospel with them. And as a church... We are making a covenant. We're making an agreement with them that we will love them and support them and be there with them through these things and that they will never, as parents, walk alone. That they have a church family that will walk with them and support them and be right there with them. So, with that being said, we have a little charge that we read. And so, um, all the families, as I read through this, um, when I pause, if you agree with these things, please say, we do. Um, if you don't, just don't say anything. Um, <laughs> But um, it, it's a, it is a serious thing um, to dedicate your child to the Lord in the fashion of you promised to raise them. We are making these pledges before the Lord and before each other. And so with that being said, parents, do you acknowledge your child to be a gift from God and give thanks for this special blessing? Do you dedicate your little one to the Lord who gave them to you? Do you promise to raise this child with the love and knowledge of the Lord? Do you promise to give your child every possible benefit of a Christ-centered home and church? And now to the congregation. I'm going to read something for us. And would you please respond in the same way? God has given us all the responsibility to train up a child in the way he should go. Do you as a church promise to give love and spiritual learning to these children? Do you commit to give Christian understanding and support to these parents? We do. With that being said, we have a gift that we want to um, give each family. Um, there's a letter for them, um, remembering and celebrating this day, as well as a really nice um, children's Bible um, for them as well that they can use as um, they grow and begin to learn about the Lord. So with that, um, we're going to go through the process again for these families. And so with that being said, um, I would ask you to um, just say, we do after um, each section that I read families. All right, are you ready? ready? All right. Do you acknowledge your child to be a gift from God and give thanks for this special blessing? We do. do you dedicate your little ones to the Lord who gave them to you? We do. do you promise to raise this child with the love and knowledge of the Lord? We do. do you promise to give your child every possible benefit of a Christ-centered home and church? We do. And to the congregation... God has given us all the responsibility to train up a child in the way he should go. Do you as a church promise to give love and spiritual learning to these children? Do you commit to give Christian understanding and support to these parents? Amen. Let's stop and pray for these families as well this morning. Our Heavenly Father, um, God, I just lift up these families, Lord, just like we did the last ones, God. Lord, there's going to be glorious, wonderful, good days. And Lord, there's going to be difficult days in raising little ones. But God, it is one of the most rewarding things that we can be a part of. So Lord, I pray for these families, God. I pray for wisdom and peace. I pray for patience for them. And God, I pray that in everything they do, they turn to you, they lean on you, they seek you out. And God, I just pray, Lord, just like I did for the last ones. Lord, I pray today for the day when these little ones come to know you as Lord and Savior, God. And Lord, let that, let that foundation be built in their homes from the things that they hear from their parents. And Lord God, I pray as a church, Lord, help us to come alongside them, support them, love these children, love these parents, and walk with them in the best of days and in the most difficult of days. 
Lord, we love you and praise you, God. And we just thank you for all these families this morning. God, what a blessing. In your holy name we pray. Amen. She was praying with me. I love it. I love it. We'll give them a second to, to exit the stage. All right, while the praise team gets everything set up for, for their part, we're going to be in a new building real soon, and we're going to have a much bigger stage. I'm really excited about it. Um, but um, let's take just a moment. Let's pray for the service this morning, and just pray for, pray for God to bless this time one more time. Let's go to the Lord for a moment. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for all that we've got to do already this morning, Lord, and, and what this means. Um, and God, to, to see children being brought to church by their parents, and Lord God, to see that foundation built in their lives is so awesome. But Lord, right now, Lord, as we get to sing your praises, as we get to celebrate you, as we get to bring glory to your name, God, I just pray for this time right now, Lord, as we just worship you. Lord, up to the praise band to you. Lord, I thank you for their dedication to be here this morning, to lead us in worship. And God, I just ask your blessing on everything that is done today, Lord, as we sing your praises. In Christ's holy name.
Heavenly Father, I do thank you for your goodness. I thank you for the fact that your kingdom, Lord, the kingdom of heaven is growing. It is here. And Lord, there's a day when you're coming back. And God, I look forward to that day. And Lord God, right now, as we talk about family this morning, Lord, as we talk about passing on our faith, we, pa we talk about passing on the knowledge of who you are. God, I pray for each family in this room today. Lord God, from parents to grandparents, to uncles and aunts, to, to, to even older siblings, God, it is our job to share the gospel with the kids that you place in our lives. So Lord God, as we talk about this this morning, God, I pray you light a fire under us to care about the kids that you place in front of us, and God, to do everything we can to make sure they know who you are. God bless this time. In your holy name, amen. Man, I really like that last song. I started to just come out and start singing with y'all, like just run around the stage or something. Um, but I knew they would just turn my mic off so y'all wouldn't get to hear my glorious voice. If you've ever heard me sing, you know I'm absolutely horrendous. Sounds like two cats fighting in an alley. But um, this morning, um, I want to go to a passage of Scripture that's, that was probably pretty familiar. I actually used this passage several years ago on a Mother's Day, and I, I want to revisit it today. And, and I've come back to it and, and, and coming at it from a little bit different angle and place. Um, and, and I think it's it's... It's hitting me in this fashion that we're going to talk about today because as I am really watching my little girl grow up and being right there with her as her fate formed and as she grows as a Christian and as a young lady, the incredibly important role that mothers have that fathers have, and also that grandparents have. Because see, that's what, that, that's what I want us to look at today. This is a, a multi-generational passage that speaks about multiple generations in a family pouring into and teaching and mentoring and discipling a young person. That is so incredibly important. And as I think on that, and I back up to my childhood, I have that experience. And at the time, I can't tell you I appreciated it like I do now as an adult with my own family and looking back and seeing the people that cared about me, that loved me, that taught me, that took me to church, that prayed with me. It's so incredibly important. And so, as we look at this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, here's what it says. It says, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. I know that same faith continues strong in you. Now, let's get some context here. Let's, let's think about what's happening. Here we have Timothy being written to by Paul. Paul had mentored Timothy, had taken him on mission trips with him. You go read the book of Acts about Timothy. The Bible mentions him multiple times. Um, as Luke writes the book of Acts, he talks about Timothy traveling with Paul and being with Paul. It talks about when Paul met Timothy. Timothy, at this point in his life, is now the pastor of the Ephesian church. So the book of Ephesians, that's one of the churches that Paul founded on some of his missionary journeys. Timothy is now the pastor of that church. And Paul is at the end of his life. 2 Timothy is one of the last things Paul wrote. And he's about to be killed. He'll be beheaded by the Romans shortly. 
And so one of the last things he wanted to do was write to this young pastor that he had mentored and that he loved and that he cared about. And as he starts this out, he mentions his mother and his grandmother. So he talks about this, these, this team of women, these two women that took their role seriously. And Paul gave a shout out to them when in culture at this time, that wasn't something that happened all the time. Uh, you didn't see women talked about and, and wrote about and listed. Now, in the Gospels and in many of the epistles, especially with Paul, Paul writes and talks about these different women in these churches and, 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 and encourages them and mentions them by name. You see them in the book of Acts, these ladies that he worked with and that he was around. It's, it's, it's really neat. And, he, and as he thinks about Timothy and he's coming into his life, he remembers these two ladies that he knew. See, these ladies weren't mysteries to Paul. Paul met them. Paul knew them. Paul had been around them. And so when I look at this, he's going back to the beginning of his relationship. And he's remembering these ladies that influenced this young man so much. So let's think about Timothy for a moment. Let's think about who he is and what has been taught to him and what's been poured into him. Go back with me in 2 Timothy. Go to verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. Listen to what verses 1 and 2 says. He says, This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I have been sent to tell others about the life he has promised through faith in Christ Jesus. I am writing to Timothy, my dear son. Okay? Now that's, that's it's really important here. As he's writing to Timothy, he mostly wrote to groups of Christians, right? He would write to like the church in Corinth. He would write to the church in Ephesus. He would write to the church in Rome. But here he's writing just to this one young man. And as he is talking about him, he calls him my dear son. See, we don't know if Paul even had um, biological children. We, we just don't know. But even if he did, when Paul converted to Christianity, remember Paul's a Pharisee before he became a Christian. When Paul converts to Christianity, his family would have abandoned him. They would have left him. Uh, oftentimes in this culture, when a, a Jewish person would become a Christian, sometimes the family would actually have a funeral. They would gather around and have a funeral like the person was gone. And they, were, they literally died. And they disowned them. That's what he would deal with. So Timothy was like a son to him. He writes something similar in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Listen to what he says about Timothy. He's talking about sending Timothy to the church at Corinth. He said, that's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I follow Christ Jesus, just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. Now, that's an interesting passage because the church in Corinth was a hot mess and they were arguing with Paul. And so Paul sent um, Timothy to tell them what was up. Timothy was going to drop the hammer on them was what was about to happen. They were in trouble and dad was sending his son to get them. And that was necessary. They were straying in some of the teachings, some of the things they were doing. They needed, they needed that correction in Paul sent Timothy. But there again, he talks about him as my faithful child. So he viewed Timothy as a son. Now look at verse 3 with me. He's writing back straight to Timothy. He says, Timothy, I thank God for you. The God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. So he prays for him. And as Paul writes these words in his prison cell, and he gets to verse 5, he remembers where Timothy's faith had come from. He's filled with memories of Eunice and Lois. Now, Eunice and her husband had had a baby boy named Timothy. And his Grandmother and mother had spent hours teaching him, spending time with him, praying with him, training him in the things of God, creating an environment where he could flourish. Now, Acts 16 tells us a little bit about Timothy and his family. It tells us that he was raised in a Jewish family, in a Jewish faith, and they had recently become Christians. They were new believers. And so they turned their focus to this young boy, Timothy. Now, we don't know a lot about Timothy's dad other than that he was not a believer. He was, he was a Gentile. He, he was Greek. So he wasn't Jewish, and he did not become a Christian. And so in this, 
We don't know if he deserted the family. We don't know if he has passed away. We, we just know that he wasn't a believer. That's what we know. But what we do know is that Timothy had two people in his life, and they loved him deeply, and their greatest desire was to teach him about the God that loved him. Now, when we look at some words in 1 Timothy chapter, um, chapter 1, verse 5, or 2 Timothy, would you put verse 5 back up for us? Put verse 5 back up for us for a moment. It says there, I remember your genuine faith. Now, let's focus in on this, some words this morning. So this genuine faith that he's talking about here, that means without hypocrisy or pretense. It was not fake. It was not a facade. It was not a mask. You know, he, he wasn't a hypocrite, right? We run across people that wear masks, right? They live double lives. I run across people that live double lives constantly. I deal with it all the time. You are one person in one place and you are another person in another place. Right? When you walk into church, we are one thing. And when we're in our backyard, we're another thing. That was not Timothy. Timothy had genuine faith. It went through every part of his life. He wasn't wearing a mask. He was who he was wherever he was. And it's easy. Guys, it is so easy for us to play the game, to put on a show, to make things look good, to say the right things to the right people in the right moments. We all know how to do that, right? We all do. We know how to, we know how to smile. We know how to shake hands. We know how when somebody says, how you doing? We say, oh, good. It doesn't matter if our, our, our legs broke. We, I'm good, right? We, this is what we say, right? Your house could have burned down. How you doing today? Good. It's just... We hide behind these things. We're not honest. We live two lives. Sometimes we live three or four of them. When what God is calling us to is this genuine faith that Timothy was taught and had passed down to him by his grandmother and his mother. A faith that runs through every part of your life. Consistency. That's who Timothy was. That's who his mother and grandmother was. So as Paul is talking about this genuine, sincere faith, that's when he recalls the godliness of his grandmother, Lois. Right? He traces that family tree. Go back to verse 5. Well, put verse 5 back up for me for a second. It says there, your genuine faith, for you share that faith that first filled your grandmother, Lois. Now that word filled is important, okay? Filled means to inhabit, to take up residence, to be home with. Um, um, one, one Greek scholar that I was looking at this passage from said it meant to house in you continually. It didn't make a guest appearance. It didn't show up at Easter. It didn't show up at Christmas. It showed up every day. It was sincere and it ran across every part of their lives. See, that's what it means to be a follower of Christ. It means that we are going to struggle. We are going to have issues. We are going to sin. We need God's grace. We need His forgiveness. Anybody needs God's grace today? Amen. Brother, I need it so bad I can't stand myself. I am a hot wreck. I'm a mess. But what God is calling us to is He is calling us to strive, to live for Him, to love Him, to love those around us, and to be obedient to Him because of the grace of Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed for me. I have the power and the ability to do that through the Holy Spirit. It's genuine. It's real. It's sincere. This faith, it filled Timothy. But before it filled Timothy, it filled his grandmother and it filled his mother. So Lois then passed on that legacy to her daughter Eunice, who had the same kind of all-in faith. Continue in this verse. He says, For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. So it, it, it goes into mom, and Paul is convinced that Timothy's faith commitment can be traced through these ladies. Because notice that word continues. It continues strong in you. It started here, it went here, now it's here. We go through three generations of a family. That's what we see here. A parent's duty is to give to a child a home of faith and to faith a home in the child. That is so key. I read that this week and I was like, ooh, that's good. Your job 
as a parent, as a grandparent, is to give a home of faith to your child so that faith can make a home in your child. It starts with us. Parents, grandparents, we're responsible for this. The Bible just said so. I'm not telling you that. God's telling you that. So there's some principles that we can take from this, okay? Of of what we need to do as parents and grandparents to pass on that faith just like Eunice and Lois did. As mothers, fathers, grandmothers, and grandfathers. So here are some of these principles. First off, sincere followers of Christ stand out from the crowd. Sincere followers of Christ stand out from the crowd, right? Paul is in prison, right? His time is short. He's fixing to get his head chopped off. That's what's going to happen to him. But in the, mid, in, the, in the middle of this, what goes back to his mind as he's writing to Timothy? Eunice and Lois, right at the start. As he's writing to Timothy, he's thinking about who this young man is. He immediately goes back to his grandmother and his mother. He saw that. The sincerity of them that was then passed on to Timothy. See, Timothy was, when Paul got there, Timothy was already a Christian. Paul didn't lead Timothy to Jesus Christ. Paul gets there in the town of Lystra, and here's this young man, Timothy. And everybody's like, hey, Timothy's awesome over there. And Paul's like, oh, really? Let's go talk about Timothy. He goes over, talks to Timothy, meets him. Timothy's already there. He's good to go. Because grandma and mom had already done some work. And winds up what happens. We just take, Paul just says, Timothy, come on with me. We got to go. You're going with me. We got mission trips to go on. We got people to save. We got churches to start. And Timothy said, yes, sir, let's go. And Timothy became that next generation that the apostles handed off to. Paul handed off to Timothy. Paul's life is over. And he's writing Timothy saying, son, carry on. And today, the gospel is being passed down to us. Let me tell you something. Our job is to look at the children that are in our lives that God has blessed us with our family and say, son, carry it on. But if we aren't living like Eunice and Lois, what in the world are we handing off to them? What are we doing? So if they're going to live it out, we have to first pass it on. If they're going to live it out, we have to first pass it on. They have to see it in us. And family is first. Look, this is where... As Christians, this is the first part of our focus, right? Grandma pointed her daughter to the gospel. Mom modeled the faith and mentored her son. So the principle is focus on the faith formation in your family first because they're your closest neighbors. They're your family members. Our most important, our most important mission field is to the kids that God has blessed us with. That's it. A Jewish proverb says this, one mother achieves more than a hundred teachers. One mother achieves more than a hundred teachers. I can tell you that. I understand that. I get that. Because I had a grandmother and a mother that taught me those things. I'm, I'm standing here in large part because of the influence they had on my life. See, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 means a lot to me on a personal level because I live through it. And I get up every day and I'm incredibly grateful for it. And I desperately want the same thing for my child. And you should want the same thing for your child. See, because faith isn't just taught, okay? Faith isn't just taught, it's caught. Okay, we can talk about faith a lot. We can talk about God. We can tell kids about Jesus. We can do all of these things. But it was in his grandmother. It was in his mom. He saw it. See, Timothy didn't just listen to words. He watched the way they lived their lives. He watched and he saw they were sincere. And let me tell you something, folks. Your children in your lives, they are listening They hear everything. They know everything that's going on. They pick up little stuff you would not imagine. I see it all the time. Right? I I, I get it. Me and Charlie riding down the road. Something happens. She responds exactly like I would. And And in a 
In traffic, that's not always appropriate. <clears throat> but she does. They hear, they see. See, you can't just tell your kids what is right. Folks, your kids need to see it being lived out in your life. And they don't just need to see it lived out in your life when you come into this building on a Sunday morning or you go to the second service on a Sunday morning and you sit down in a pew, in a chair, wherever it is you may be. You sit down and they, they're next to you, right? I, I've lived that, man. Sit down next to the parents, sit down next to the grandparents. And I'm sitting there, I'm listening to the sermon, singing the, singing the good old hymns when I was a little boy. I'm not just listening. I'm not just seeing them tell me something. You have to see it lived out. You want faith to be caught, you got to live it out. Now, there are no perfect parents or grandparents. But what God is looking for is ordinary people in ordinary circumstances who strive to be faithful. Who just try to live it. I read a quote this week I thought also was good. When we think about how hard it is to be a parent. It said this, God is awesome. He doesn't need you to be awesome. He just needs you to be faithful. He just wants us to be obedient. I'm going to fall short all the time, but God will never fall short. So as we look at how Timothy's faith was impacted by his mother and grandmother, we see the encouragement to do the same. I mean, we are called to sow these seeds into the lives of the kids that we're around. It has to be delivered to the next generation. Timothy heard the gospel, but he needed to repent and receive that salvation. And look, I'm going to be honest this morning. Some of you in here, you may have some, some, some prodigal children in your lives. Some, some family members, some kids, some grandkids that maybe they're not walking with God as you would have them to do. I'm not going to tell you that you've done something wrong or there's some fail-safe for me to guarantee everything happens right in kids. But what I am saying is that we have to do our part. At some point, a young person has to make their own decisions, their own choices of their lives. And when they grow up and they've grown and they've gone, sometimes we can't help it. We can't make those decisions for them. We can't fix everything. They're not five with a boo-boo on their knee anymore. But what I am telling you is this. Christ needs to be at home in your heart before he can be at home in your home and before you can pass these things on. I guarantee you, I guarantee you there will be struggles if we don't. There may even be struggles if we do, but man, if Christ is alive in our heart, and man, we're following God, we're giving everything we got to Him, man, He's going to walk us through the most difficult of times. But we are called specifically to pass this on. I read about a cartoon in which a young daughter asked her mom a very important question. She said, Mommy, what is a Christian? And the mother thought for a moment and replied, A Christian is a person who loves and obeys God, loves their friends, neighbors, and even their enemies. They are kind and gentle and pray a lot. They look forward to going to heaven and believe knowing God is better than anything on this earth. That is a Christian. And the little girl pondered this for a few moments and asked, Mommy, have I ever seen a Christian? See, Timothy saw two of them every single day. There was no phoniness in them. They were committed, and Timothy knew it. And no one knows better than a child whether faith is genuine. They pick it out in a second. So let me ask you a question. Do your children, your grandchildren, do the kids in your life in front of you, maybe it's a little brother, a little sister, maybe it's a niece or a nephew, do they see you as a godly God? Can they talk about you like Paul is talking about Eunice and Lois? You have to answer that question, I can't. So if we want to instill authentic faith in the children in our lives, in our grandchildren, then we have to take our own faith seriously. If we're just going through the motions, kids see it, and, and to be honest, they will probably do the same thing in the future. That's the honest truth. So Timothy's family was this fertile environment to share his faith because it was sown into him. It was planted into him. And we need to share Scripture with them. They not only talked to him, they shared Scripture with him. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. He says there, this is Paul writing to Timothy, but you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus Christ. So, that phrase there, those who taught you, that's plural. That's not just talking about 
Paul. He could say that I taught you. He says those who taught you. He's bringing Eunice and Lois into it intentionally. He understands they taught him the scriptures. They showed him the prophecies about Jesus. They showed him all these things. And that word there, childhood, that refers to from like a little toddler, a newborn. They were, they were doing this from the time this little boy was, was, was in the crib. They were reading to him. They were teaching him. They were praying for him. They, they were singing songs to him. Four scholars were arguing over Bible translations. One said he preferred the King James because of its eloquent English. Another said he liked the ESV for its literalism. A third was sold on the New Living Translation because of its contemporary use of phrases and ease of understanding. After being quiet for a moment, the fourth scholar admitted, I have personally preferred my mother's translation. And when the other scholars started looking at him funny, he said, my mom translated each page of the Bible into life. It's the most convincing translation I've ever read. Parents, can your children say that about you today? What kind of Bible is your child reading when they look at your life? And we serve them. And we serve others around us. They need to see that. Look at Acts 16, verses 1 through 3. It says, Paul went first to Derbe and then to Lystra, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. This is when he meets Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium, so Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. In deference to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left, for everyone knew that his father was a Greek. So, what do we see here? We see he was a strong believer. He's referred to as a disciple. I said that's, a, that's an important word. He could have just referred to him as, as just a believer, but he says a young disciple named Timothy. A disciple is a learner and a follower. A disciple is someone that is serious. Right? We talk about the 12 disciples. We talk about Peter. We talk about Matthew. We talk about James and John and Andrew. Right? That's who we're talking. We talk about Thomas. That's who we talk, we talk about disciples. We talk about folks that were serious business. Timothy was serious business. And we're all called to be disciples and we're all called to make disciples. Timothy was a full-fledged follower of Jesus. He wasn't just a fan of showing up at church on Sunday. He was in. And he had a good reputation, right? It, say, it says there in verse 2 that Timothy was well thought of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. He had a reputation. Other Christians who saw him went, this is a man of integrity. This young man got his act together. This guy's going places. So, if you're a parent or a grandparent this morning, you're on a mission. You're on a mission to make some Timothys. And the values that you leave your children and grandchildren, they're more important than any valuables you may ever leave them. We can leave our kids lots of stuff. We can leave them a house, cars, land, a bank account. 401k, an IRA, stock portfolio, CDs, whatever. We can leave them all kind of stuff. We can leave them jewelry, right? A little while back when I went to visit my mom and dad up in Alabama, when me and my dad went hunting back in October, my mom gave me my grandfather's gold watch. And I value that watch. I, I like watches. But I don't even wear that thing because if I broke it or messed it up, I would be heartbroken. So it's in a drawer at my house in a case and it sits there because I'm too scared to wear it. Because if something happened to it, my mama might come down here and kill me. <laughs> and that's great that I have that. But the thing that's important is not the gold watch. The thing that's important is the fact that I listened to my grandfather pray. I would sit, when I would, when I would go and spend the night with them when I was a little boy, I loved spending the night with my mama and papa because they did everything I wanted to do. <laughs> it would be time to go to bed and we would go into their bedroom. My grandfather had some pretty serious health issues. And so he couldn't get down to the floor, so he would sit on the bed, on the side of the bed. And me and my mama would get on our knees on either side of him. And we would hold hands and we would pray every night. That's more important than go watch. He taught me to pray. 
what better thing can be passed along to a child than God? I want to close with a little story. I've had several for you today. I like this one. It says a mom described an incident that happened between her and her young child. It was a busy day in our home, but then with 10 children and another one on the way, every day was a bit hectic. Absolutely. On this particular day, however, I was having trouble doing even routine chores, all because of one little boy. He was three at the time, was on my heels no matter where I went. Whenever I stopped to do something and turned around, I would trip over him. Several times, I patiently suggested fun activities to keep him occupied. Wouldn't you like to play on the swing set, I asked again. But he simply smiled an innocent smile and said, oh, that's all right, Mommy. I'd rather be in here with you. Then he continued to bounce happily along behind me. After stepping on his toes for the fifth time, I began to lose patience and insisted that he go outside to play with the other children. He still wouldn't go. And when I asked him why he was acting this way, he looked up at me with his sweet green eyes and said, well, Mommy, in Sunday school, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footsteps. But I can't see him, so I'm walking in yours. What footsteps are your children walking in? When they see you, they see a reflection of Jesus Christ. What a value are you giving them? What is your faith teaching them? What is the Bible that is your life saying to them every day when they read a page? Pass on to them faith. Pass on to them integrity. Pass on to them a servant's heart. Pass on to them to love their neighbor. Teach them the scripture and teach them through your lives. Faith is taught and caught. Let's pray. Lord God, Lord, I pray specifically for families in here today. Lord God, because I believe fully, Lord, the family is under attack in our culture. Satan wants to destroy the family more than anything in the world. And Lord God, I pray for the families in this room, God, for protection for them, around them. God, that they, Lord, gravitate to you. And Lord, that they do everything they can to live a life of faith in front of their children, in front of their grandchildren, in front of the little ones that God has placed in their families and in their lives. God, bless them. God, protect them. And God, I pray for this next generation of kids. Lord, that are in this room right now. Lord, they're in the nursery. They're, 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 they're in children's church right now. Lord God, may we as a church and each family in here pour into them and teach them and love them just like Paul and Eunice and Lois did with Timothy. And God, may it produce young people that love you and will continue spreading the gospel to the day you come back. Lord God, we love you and we praise you. In your holy name. I want to thank you all for being here today and hope you have a happy Mother's Day um, and enjoy yourself the rest of the day. Um, hell. But you guys, thank you so much for being here. Have, to have, have a happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Be blessed.